let you guys roll in here. <laughs> Maybe one time when we plan it, Johnny, for sure. <laughs> um, so just roll in. I'm gonna keep you really low to the ground today. Like I'm gonna really try to not even stand uh, at all. So if you're pretty tight through the hips, you might wanna consider some sort of boost, a block. Um, oof, I'm inhaling that Palo Santo. A block, um, a rolled up yoga mat, um, a child's booster seat, if you have that lying around. Um, once that little ticker there starts to even out, I will, uh, I'll get this playlist started. Um, if you have it today, when I first decided I wanted to do this class, I'd been very, very stagnant for about a week. Um, physically, emotionally, everything. I hadn't moved. I hadn't really thought I'd been pretty, um, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Like hazy. I don't know, whatever. But this was one of the things that got me moving again. And it, I mean, it got a lot of emotion stirring as well. I was really super emotional after the first one that I did. So this playlist has a bunch of stuff that's, uh, meant to make you emotional. There's stuff that's going to break your heart on there. There's stuff that's going to make you want to be like, ah, oh, on there. Um, there's stuff that'll just be really calming and nice on there. So allow the music to bring you emotional release. It's generally what I'm aiming for when I do make you a playlist. So, I mean, and myself a playlist for that matter. Um, okay. So what time is it? 7.01. I'll wait till about 7.03 now because it just clicked over to 7.02. Um, so yeah, if you want to strap for tight shoulders or a block for tight hips, you can go for that. But I'll, I'll try to do a lot of modifications so that even if you, um, you don't have props, you can still, like this is meant to feel good. There's a, you can shift the practice in any direction between, you know, just straight up feeling good, comfort, maybe no growth, but feels awesome, um, and challenge in that discomfort where all the growth is, and you can kind of shift it to whatever side you're looking for. Um, this practice is meant to be a little more nourishing, but if you feel like you want to make it a little more challenging, there are certainly ways in which you can do that. All right. Get your, uh, get your music ready. I'm gonna count you down in three, two, one, and then I'll go play like this. When I go play like this on this screen, I'm also going to play like this on my uh, laptop. So it usually syncs up pretty good. Okay, so are we ready? We're gonna go three. This is the real time. Three, two, one, play. And uh, I'm gonna start you seated. So you take any comfortable seat of your choice. If you can take hero, Take care of. Seated on your heels. If you need a block in between the feet, just take a block in between the feet. Sometimes it can feel good to like roll up a towel or something like that underneath of your knees. And then um, you don't get that pressure from that compression between your calves and your thighs so much. So once you get settled in, you can shift around a little bit, do what you need to do. Just take a deep breath in through the nose and then let a couple of mouth. And then start to transition your inhalations and your exhalations to your nose. Finding a slight constriction in the base of your throat that allows the breath to just easily brush along the base of your throat, creating that slight sensation. Allow the muscles of your face to relax. 
allow your body to feel rooted, but also spacious and light. A big part of finding lightness is engaging through your bandas. So finding a slight drawing in of the pelvic floor, you might feel really like the shins almost engage down into the floor and the thigh bones start to straighten up a little bit more. And then the low belly starts to pull back toward the spine and then it's almost like you're trying to pull it up underneath of your rib cage and it's just really light. So that you simultaneously feel rooted, also light. And then you'll just slowly start to blink the eyes open if they're closed, mine are. If they're already open, just keep them open. And then from there, you'll just take your right hand out to the side, start to turn the right thumb down. Take the right hand to your sacrum. Try to make sure that you're not caving the low back in, rather you're pushing it back into the right hand. And then start to lower your left ear down towards your left shoulder and pull both shoulders down away from the ears and just start to turn your head up and down. And then start to take your left hand down beside your left waist. Start to reach your right arm up and over. Take an exaggerated breath into the right side rib cage. As you exhale, just soften. And then slowly start to come back through center. The right hand goes to the lap. The left hand moves out to the side and then the left thumb faces down. Take the left hand to the sacrum again. Push the low back into the hand. And then start to drop your right ear toward the right shoulder and draw both shoulder blades down the back of the rib cage. And then you can start to turn that up and down. So I got a lot of requests for hammies, low back, and hips. So I'm going to stay there today. And then you'll take the right hand down toward the floor, reach that left arm up and over, take a nice exaggerated breath into the left side rib cage. Try to keep your right shoulder away from your right ear. Soften as you exhale. And then slowly start to come up through center, come into a tabletop. So knees below hips, shoulders above wrists. You just start to cycle through some cat cows or whatever other freaky little movements that you may have in your, you know, quadruped toolbox, whatever feels good. Push into things that feel tight. So my sides are pretty tight right now. I'm pushing it into the sides. Just explore around a little bit. Let your free fly fly. Do a couple lion's breaths if you want. Instead of inhaling into cow, exhale and like stick your tongue out. Get weird. And then from there, come into a neutral spot. Start to take that right leg up to the side, sit back towards your left heel, keep the left toes tucked under. So you're gonna feel some stretch through the inner edge of the right thigh. Try to keep the whole right foot on the floor and lift the inner edge of the right thigh. And then from there, start to walk your hands over toward the left, stretch out the right side again, make the right sit bone really heavy. And then slowly start to come back to center with the hands. Hands are gonna just really stretch forward in space here, and then you'll start to come forward toward a tabletop, and then reach up and back into a three-legged downward dog. Look back towards your left foot, Push your left hip crease and your left thigh bone toward the back edge of your mat. And then from there, step your right foot forward in between your hands. Take your left knee down onto the floor, interlace the elbows, lift your chest. And then as you exhale, take your hands to the floor, slide back hamstring stretch. And then start to cycle between the two, inhaling to lift and then exhaling. Do one more, come forward, breathe in. And then exhale, breathe out. 
Next inhale, you're coming forward to the right foot. You're going to start to walk the hands toward the left. Turn both sets of toes toward the left. Inhale, lift your chest forward. As you exhale, fold over both legs. Grab onto your opposite elbows. Just let the spine be heavy as it dangles from the hip. Be a little stronger through the legs. So make sure you're not pressing all the way back into the heels with the um, knees hyperextended. A little weight forward to the ball joints of the feet. And then start to walk the hands forward in space a little bit. So it's almost like a downward dog with uh, wide legs and very short. And then think about sliding your hands back towards your feet as you lift your chest forward. You should feel some work in between the shoulder blades. And then from there, start to bend the right elbow, look under the left arm and slide that right hand to the outer edge of your left leg. There we go. And then start to bend into your right knee a little bit and stretch out the back edge of that right shoulder. You can kind of shrug and then move it down, move into that space, breathe into it for three. Two. Good, and then slowly start to walk your hands forward to your right foot. And then step your right foot back to meet your left foot, come into a plank. From knees, toes, you can come down to the belly any way that suits you. And then from there, just lift your head, neck, and chest, come into a baby cobra, elbows press down toward the floor as chest lifts. Exhale, come back down. Slide the hands out to the sides, tent the fingertips, elbows up for a finger stand cobra. Inhale, come up. And then as you exhale, roll your right shoulder down toward the floor, look up at your left elbow. Inhale, come all the way back up. Exhale, left shoulder down, look up to your right elbow. And then inhale, come back up. And exhale, bring it back down. And then just slowly make your way back into a child's pose. Breathe there for five. Take a nice deep breath into the low back. Do you exhale, soften your hip creases. And then inhale into your mid back. And as you exhale, soften your feet. And then inhale into the space between your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, just soften your chest, your jaw. And then you'll slowly start to come forward into a tabletop. You're gonna take that left leg out to the side, keep the left foot on the floor, and then start to sit back toward the right heel with the right toes tucked under. So you get a little bit of a foot stretch for the right leg, for the right foot, pardon me, and some stretch for the inner edge of the left thigh. See where you can make that left sit bone just a little bit heavier. Good. And then you'll slowly start to come forward. Lift up off the right knee. Take that left leg all the way up and back three legged downward dog. Push the right thigh bone toward the back edge of your mat. And then step the left foot forward between the hands. Come down onto the right knee. You'll interlace the elbows. Lift the chest on the inhale. Lift up and out of the hips. So it should feel like your left heel and your right knee are engaging in toward one another. And then as you exhale, doesn't have to be big. And then start to move between the two. Move real slow if you need to. And you should. Like really just experience each space in between each posture, the, the entry, peak, and then exit of each one. And then from there, step the left foot down onto the floor and slowly start to walk your hands out to the right. Inhale, lift your chest forward. And then as you exhale, fold over both legs. You can just let yourself hang here. If you want to take a more active fold this time, grab onto your big toes, push your big toes down to the floor. Take the elbows out to the sides, let your head hang heavy. As your head hangs heavy, try to make sure that your shoulders aren't shrugging way up towards your ears because you're pulling on your toes so hard. Try to soften where you're pulling and roll the shoulders down. So you still want to slide the shoulder blades down the rib cage, but it's going to feel like up 
because you're upside down. And then slowly start to walk the hands forward in space. It's kind of like a little baby downward dog with wide legs. And then you think about sliding the hands back toward the feet so the chest can really come forward. Three breaths. If you feel tension in the back of the neck, just drop your chin a little. Two. Good. And then from there, you'll start to bend the left elbow, reach the left hand through toward the right leg. You can be anywhere along the right leg, wherever it'll land, it doesn't matter. And then start to bend the left knee and you'll feel some pull through the back of the left shoulder. And then you can stay still in that or you can move around in it. It's your call. Three more breaths. Oh, I got a hair in my mouth. Two. Real life home things. All right, so slowly start to walk the hands forward to the top of your mat. Step your left foot back to meet your right foot. Make your way down onto your belly. Take your arms out in a Y, so past the top edges of your mat, and then see where your tailbone is. Mat's sticking way up in the air right now. See where you can actually lengthen the tailbone down toward the heels a little bit more. The butt will squeeze a little bit. Pull your navel up toward your spine. And then from that space, take the feet out a little wider as well. Press down into the tops of the feet. Try to send that all the way out into the baby toes. You're engaging the outer lines of the legs as well. And then from there, you're gonna keep pressing down through the right foot. Start to lift the left leg. Keep the left hip on the floor. Press down through the left hand. Lift the right hand. Three reps. Two. Good, slowly come down. And then other side. So press down through the left foot all the way to the baby toe. Start to lift the right leg. Right hip stays on the floor. Left arm starts to rise. Slowly come back down. Make your way back into a child's pose. Breathe there. Five. Four. Three. Two. Good, so come forward into a tabletop-ish. You'll take the right leg out to the side again, tuck the left toes under. Start to turn the right toes up this time and start to sit back toward that left heel. So this is gonna start to turn this way into the inner, inner line of the leg a lot more now. See where you can drop the right sit bone, make it a little heavier, breathe for three. You can bend the knee here for two. Good, and then as you start to come forward, can you take the left knee off the floor and just take that right leg all the way up and back. As you exhale, the right foot will come forward outside. The right hand, take the left knee down to the floor. Circle the hips a couple times, work out the kinks, one direction, and then the other. And then turn the right toes out a little bit. You can come onto the outer edge of the right foot if that feels safe for your right knee. And then someone wanted a quad stretch, so start to bend the left knee there. You can either stay here and really just think about oh, scooping the belly in and up, and that'll give you a little more stretch through the front of the left hip. You can grab the foot if there's space for it to breathe for three, two. Good, slowly let that go. And then take your right hand down inside that right foot. Come up off your left knee, turn your left leg way out. So your left toes start to point toward the back of your mat. And then start to bend into your left knee, walk back with your hands, peel off the right foot. See how low we can maybe sit toward the left heel. Maybe then the hands want to start to come up, maybe not. Breathe for five. Four, three, two. Start to walk the hands back toward the top of your mat. Turn the left toes forward now, set the right toes down, and then pull the right hip toward the back of your mat. You can keep both hands inside the right foot. If you're like looking at the screen right now, being like, yeah, right, my hands aren't on the floor. 
you like need to bring the floor up to where your hands are. So you still have that thing that helps you push the chest forward because otherwise you kind of just look like this. You want to be long. Cool. So from there, start to take that right leg all the way up and back. Whoop, counter. This time you're gonna bend the right knee, stretch out the quad on that right leg again. Or no, it's the other leg. Press the left thigh bone back in space. And then start to bring the right knee forward. Behind the right wrist, take the left toes back in space. Inhale, lift your chest up. And as you exhale, you'll just slowly come down into pigeon. You can stay right here for five. Uh, you know what, let's stay here for eight. You can also play around with other variations of pigeon if that's your choice. You could work toward upright. That actually might be a good idea. I am going to work towards some split like functions later. So if you look at what happens here in um, pigeon, if I were to tuck my back toes under and engage my back leg up a little bit more, this is splits through the back leg as well as the torso, not through the front leg. I'm more limited in my hamstrings, safely. Not, not so much in how long they are. I know, just three more breaths. Um, hip flexors. We tend to be limited in one or both. One, the other, or both. There we go. All right, cool. Start to take the hands down, step back into a plane. Slowly start to lower to the floor. And then take your arms out in a Y again. Take your feet out at the other end. So it's like a big capital X. Press the pubic bone down toward the floor. So gentlemen, just like be careful. Um, belly button presses back toward the spine. And then from there, you'll keep the left toes on the floor. Keep the right hip on the floor. Lift the right leg. Maybe start to lift the left arm. If you can keep the right hip on the floor as you bend the right knee, as in not do this, but if you can keep it on the floor and grab the foot, then great. Pressing right hip down and right foot up. And then slowly start to come back down. Take one breath at center reset. And then press the right foot down, start to lift the left leg up. You can stay right here, right here, or start to come here. Five. Look forward. Four. Press that right foot down toward the baby toe. Two. Good. Slowly. Let that go. And then start to slide the hands back, push back into a child's pose. Hold for five, four, three, two. Good. So come forward and do a tabletop. Tap the right toes under. And start to take the left leg out to the side. Turn the left toes up toward the ceiling as you sit back toward the right heel. Try to make sure the hips don't sway way over to the right. They're going to want to keep the right hip, right sit bone. There we go. Sort of in line with the right heel. Take another deep breath in. Soften on the exhale. And then slowly start to come forward. Lift the left leg up and back. And then step the left foot outside with the left hand. Take the right knee down onto the floor and then you'll just swivel a couple times, one direction, work out the kinks. Doesn't have to be all of them, could just be one or two. And then from there, you can stay right here or do try to mirror what you did on the other side unless you're modifying for some sort of injury. Um, modifying the practice for some sort of injury. So you can stay right here. You'll get the quad stretch there, or you can grab on. 
Try to make sure that left knee isn't wanging out to the side. Put, put the inner edge of your left foot on the floor. Should be slightly uncomfortable in the left hip crease because it's doing something, not doing nothing. And then from there, let go. Good. And then you'll start to come up off the right knee. Turn the right toes way, 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 way out. And then start to bend into the right knee, peel off the left foot. And I mean, you can very, I have to very gingerly, like an old lady, put myself down on this side. I'm gripping my mat because I've, I've had a lot of hamstring attachment injury issues on my left side. So I actually don't feel anything in the back of my left leg down here. Where I do start to feel something is when I start to bend this left knee and then I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Because a lot of the stuff happening up there is just kind of dead at this point. It's dead. So I need to activate a little bit in order to wake it up and make it do the right things. So this is just, <laughs> you see shaking. This is where a lifetime of focus specially leads you to. <laughs> Alright, slowly shift two. Walk your hands forward in space. And then you'll take your left leg all the way up and back. And then take your left knee forward behind your left wrist. Take your right toes back in space. And then again, if you do want to do a little more splits prep work, we can stay at half splits, which you've all actually already done. So don't worry, you've been there. But if you do want to practice the, the splitty portion, you could try pigeon with your right toes tucked under, thinking about sliding the right knee forward toward the left heel, and then take it out of the low back. So really start to pull in and up through the pelvic floor. Breathe for five, four, three, Two. Okay, so slowly start to take the hands down, step the left foot back to meet the right foot. While we're all the way back down onto the floor. You send to your right arm up to the side. It can be in a T, more intensity with the cactus. Maybe try low intensity and then move to high if you've never done this before. I like to roll my right shoulder up off the floor and then press into my left hand. So I can start to look over my left shoulder, but that might just be me. You can get a lot more sensation as well, I find, if you bend your knees. And it can actually become a little more restorative. Three more breaths. Good, so if you bent the knees, start to straighten the legs, come back onto the belly. Left arm moves out, move to the left side, breathe, one, two, three. So slowly start to straighten your legs. And then from there, you'll start to push back into a child's pose one more time. And then roll up to a seat, depending on how you're feeling. You could toe squat. Is anybody ever really in the mood for this? I don't think so. But there are times when you know it's going to be useful. Or you can take more of a camel back bend variation, taking the hands down onto the heels, lifting the hips, spreading through the collarbones and lifting up through the back of your heart space as your hips press forward, your tush clenches the tuning, your navel presses back toward your spine to smush your organs up against your low spine and prevent hyperextension. Take one more deep breath in and then slowly Start to come back down. Pause. Let the sweats subside. And then you'll come forward into a tabletop one more time.
This time the right leg isn't gonna touch down. It's gonna move out to the side. You'll tap the left toes under, lift the right leg all the way up and back. And then step the right foot forward in between the hands. And then from there, kind of depends on where you're most limited. I find I'm most limited through the hamstrings. So I start by finding the most range through my hip flexor at the back. Some of us are more limited through the hip flexor at the back, so we may want to try to find the maximum range that we can get through the hamstring first, and then start to walk the back knee back. What I want you to avoid is weighing down into it, press into your hands so you can sit up out of it, even if that's, you know, here, chest forward. It'll be like, 12 breaths, say you're at 10. To keep breathing, just come on. Yeah, it did. What a great song to come on while you're doing this. Over time, you might find, okay, I'm starting to be able to lean forward. What if maybe I started to take this left knee back a little further? Could I sit up a little taller? And then, could I maybe even, yeah, could I play around with lifting my hands? Raising up at both sides of the waist. And then on the right side anyway, where my hamstring's not dead, you don't want to hyperextend through the back of the knee. It's really difficult. You also don't want to hyperextend through the low back. So if I'm going to fully extend my legs, there's no way my hands are coming off the floor. Otherwise, it looks like this. <laughs> so I'm really, really holding up here. Now there's a few ways to get out of this. One of the ways is the way I just showed you, but generally walking forward in space a little bit more and then starting to draw your back knee in and then starting to pull your back leg back and then just rock a little. Side to side, isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? And then you'll slowly start to take the left leg up to the side. Tuck the right toes under, take the left leg all the way up and back. Step the left foot forward between the hands. Take the right knee down. Gingerly, mindfully, start to move your way through this pose. You want to think about the same thing you think about in any high lunge or low lunge. Right knee pulls forward to left heel. So if you take the right knee back in space, cool. But can you find that action again? And if you take the left heel forward in space, cool. Can you still find, oh, it's so much harder as you get further apart, this action. Another five. Four. If you're like, I'm not feeling anything, 
You can start to point your toes. It'll pull your chest forward. So pull your toes down toward the floor and then push your heels out into that space. Keep the chest forward. And then you could try it again. Point your toes down toward the floor. It'll pull the chest forward and then push your heels forward into that space. And this is how I started finding a lot more length through the back of my legs. And then you start to push the heels back to really sort of max out the amount of space you're finding through the posterior chain. Eventually, the hands will interlace below the feet. Eventually, you'll grab onto a wrist that is uh, not for someone who's got hips like mine. Slowly start to make your way all the way back up. And then you're gonna take the soles of your feet together. Let your knees just drop out to the sides. So if you're sitting with your knee, <laughs> this one, push feet. Push feet further, for, further forward. Um, you're gonna have a really hard time doing anything when you're locked up here. So you might just want to take the hands behind you and, until you feel like, oh, okay, cool, I can move this thing again, right? Um, and then if you can, just let gravity sort of work its, work its magic, do the thing it does. And then this is more for low back, so I'm going to get you to really tuck the, not, not so much the tailbone, like push the seat bones forward towards your heels, really round, like you would in hat pose. There we go. So this is more upper back. And then slowly start to inhale, come up. And then as you exhale, start to hinge forward. And then when you can't hinge forward anymore, start to push out where the low back is. So really root the seat bones, pull the pelvic floor in and up, and just let your chin come in towards your chest. So you really wanna think about like, pulling the pelvic floor in and up here. Inhale, come all the way back up. Good, and then exhale like cat. So really press the upper back back in space. You sort of roll back on your bum. This is also pelvic floor in. It's just a different piece of the back that you're pressing back. And then you slowly start to come up. And then start with a hinge, and then when you can't hinge anymore, then start to like, almost think about tucking your tailbone underneath of you from that space, and just allow everything else to round forward, chin in towards chest. Cool. Well, let's start to lift back up. Take your hands outside your knees, pull your knees in toward one another, and then take both feet out to the top of your mat, roll back onto your back. Pull your knees in towards your chest, just rock a little bit side to side here. So because I wanted to do cow face, but I find cow face is impossible to do if you don't have blocks um, and you have tight hips, which is like 90% of people. So we're gonna do cow face pose lying down. You're gonna take both legs up to the sky. And you're gonna cross your legs as though you were seated in a chair being very proper. And then you'll start to bend your left knee. And then you can grab your shins, your ankles, your feet even. And then I want you to feel your two thigh bones starting to turn out away from the midline. So out, away from one another. And that might be a moment where you go, <gasps> breathe out. See if you can push the, uh, the sacrum and tailbone forward in space. Can you wag your tail a little bit over toward the left? And you relax your shoulders a little more. And then just gently let go of the feet. And they shouldn't spring away, away from you. If they're springing, you're pulling too hard, yo. Take your arms out into cactus. Set your left foot down onto the floor. 
Take your hips over toward the right. And then just drop both knees to the left. It's okay if the right shoulder feels like it wants to come up off the floor. It could even be a good thing. Take the right hand all the way over in the same direction as your knees. And then as you inhale, let it open back up. And maybe that feels good for you, so you do it a few times. Inhaling to really reach. Exhaling to bring it back in the same direction as the knee. Inhaling to reach. And then exhaling to stay. For five. Four. Let the music cleanse your soul of any emotions that you might, might just be holding on to. Take this as an opportunity to get it out. You did a lot of hip work. You jostled a lot of that around. Slowly come back onto your back. And then take your hips back into the middle of the mat and take the feet back up towards the ceiling. Cross the left leg over top of the right thigh like a big very proper. And then slowly start to bend the right knee. Grab on. Try to make sure it's not a slingshot when you let go. You're making the hip flexors do some work to draw the thigh bones in toward the chest. And then within the actual hip joint, you're rolling the thigh bones out. Away from one another. And then maybe you're wagging your tail over toward the right just a little bit and you're softening your grip and draw your shoulders down and taking some cleansing breaths. For four. Three. Two. Good, and then from there you'll slowly start to take the arms out into the cactus. Take the right foot down onto the floor, shift the hips over toward the left. Let both knees just fall down to the right. And it's okay if the left shoulder comes off. If this felt good on the other side, and then breathe it in, it's gonna feel good on this side too. Feel your entire rib cage move. So many little articulations and cool stuff happening as you happen to breathe. And then you stay. So I just told you to like let the emotions out, feel the emotions, let them go. That can come with a lot of judgment if our emotions are not <laughs> the ones that we want them to be. And I mean, how often does that actually happen? You also did a lot of chest heart opening today. Sort of brood. Some energy in the heart space. The heart space is responsible for compassion. You can allow yourself to feel what's there, but have some compassion for yourself in that it's okay to feel it. And then slowly start to come back onto your back. Shift your hips back into the middle of your mat. And then unwind your feet. Press your feet down into the floor. If you want to take a hip flexor stretch, you can push the hips up toward the ceiling. You can start to walk the shoulder blades underneath of you. I like to walk my shoulders in toward my feet. Grab onto my heels. Not open enough for that today, apparently. So much Pilates lately. And then slowly start to come back down. And then take your feet way out in front of you. I want to give you one final compassion energy burster. So just roll over onto the left side and stick, stick your right hand below your, your right butt cheek and your left hand below your left butt cheek. If you guys had parents like mine, there were times where you'd be super restless and they would like actually be like, sit on your hands. Um, and, oh my god, I reminded myself of my mother so much in that moment. Anyway, it's kind of like that. 
Whoa. And then slowly start to press into your forearms. Lift through the back of your heart space. Let your shoulders relax. Now, I have giant tonsils, so I tend to like to keep my chin a little tucked. You do have the option to send your head back, but this is what I start to sound like as I start to send my head back. Because I feel, I, ugh, I literally cannot breathe. So, if you can, go for it. You can set the head down or sort of just let it open up through the throat. And then slowly start to make your way down, starting down at the tailbone. Bend the knees and come up off the hands. Just roll out the wrists a little bit. And then pull your knees in toward your chest, curl into a tiny little ball. Take a really deep breath in. And exhale, find your Shavasana. So if you want to get up and turn some lights off and stuff in your place, whatever, I mean, I'm going to go do it. This is also a practice you probably could have pretty much done in the dark, but I'm going to turn the lights off in my space. Come to any position that feels good, um, spacious, full. It allows you to be tuned in and completely here. Notice if you can sort of feel the energy swirling around your hip and your heart spaces. You start to let out a couple of heavy sighs and just release any residual tension that you may have actually brought in during practice. It's possible to do it if we're pushing too hard. Taking these last few moments to tune in to how you feel and, you know, just bring you back into a baseline state where you can move on with the rest of your day. Slowly start to shift all your awareness back into your body, back to your breath, and explore the spaces in your body where your breath will go. Get to wake yourself up in a way that feels nurturing. Slowly come up to a seat. And just take your hands together in front of your heart. Giving yourself a moment of silent gratitude for getting on your mat, getting into your body, getting out of your head. Spend a silent a moment in silent gratitude for the practice, for what it is. 
for how it supports us. I'm going to take in a final moment of gratitude for me for being here, for your presence and your energy and your thoughts and your comments and your donations and all of it from me. And we'll take a final deep breath together. Inhale. And just exhale all the way. Namaste. Good work, guys. Um, if you're like super emotional. <laughs> Later, even like through into tomorrow, your dreams are super hyper emotional and stuff. Know that you stirred, Ooh, you stirred up that pot. Um, but maybe we also stirred up this enough as well that we can view that from a place of compassion. Um, truly, one of the most powerful things in the world. Um, uh, that being said, uh, if you have the means and you wish to send a donation, um, you can do it over on my website. The link is in my bio. Um, or you can send an email money transfer to amorley9 at gmail.com. Um, and then, yeah, have a good rest of the night. I'm going to bake some brownies. I ordered some donuts yesterday, but uh, I ordered them yesterday, so clearly they're gone. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe brownies tonight, but I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of this Saturday. Hope you're all nice and stretched out. And if you're if you're joining later, I hope you're having a fat fantastic time at whatever time you're at, living in the moment. And yeah, stay mindful, stay peaceful. Bye bye. <laughs>